Welcome to the Smart Fit. Cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Today we're taking you on a short three-stop food tour of Chicago with five foods you've got to try. Some are familiar, but others aren't so commonly known or even easy to find. Portillo's is the best spot for Chicago-style hot dogs, Italian beefs, and a secret for those with a sweet tooth. Billy Goat Tavern offers up history and fame back to 1934, and may be the reason why the Chicago Cubs had such a long championship drought, saving the most popular for last, Chicago-style deep dish pizza. Yeah, the one with the sauce on top. We end this thing with a bang. Enough talking, let's do this. It's not even 11 a.m. and we're hungry. No bacon and eggs or croissant and cafe con leche for us, no. Today we're going for burgers and beer before noon and nothing, I mean nothing, is going to stop us. We were worried they might be closed this early in the morning and we were surprisingly and ecstatically surprised to find out they're open at 7 a.m. What? Yeah, whether you're heading home from a long night out or on your way to work, you can get served hot patties starting at 7 a.m. Bless America. As you walk up to this underground hole-in-the-wall restaurant, you're greeted with signs inviting you to enter and settle your curiosity. Don't expect to be impressed by the interior design, but it sure is like traveling back in time. Wood paneled walls, high top bars, old signs and newspaper articles hanging on the wall remind me of man caves of the past. Nothing beats the sound of Cheeseburger, 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 cheeseburger. No fresh chips, no Pepsi Cheeseburger. The burgers are made freshly and right before your eyes. No secrets here, just honest Midwest friendliness and good food. I ordered a triple cheeseburger and Alazne ordered a double bacon cheeseburger. She said a triple cheeseburger was too much. Okay. The thinly pressed burger patties are not smashed, but thin enough to cook quickly and result in a crispy bite on the outside. Slices of American cheese melt into this creamy texture we all love about cheeseburgers. The thing that stands out the most to me is the bun, but it's actually a Kaiser roll. I didn't know what to expect when biting into it. The burgers come plain and you dress it how you like. If you like this video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the little bell icon so you get a notification when we publish a new video. Normally this place is packed, but because it's 11 o'clock in the morning, it's a little empty. What the goat? Back from the mini bar with some cold beers in mugs. I swear this is a classic man cave. Hot and fresh and we're ready to bite in, the American cheese brings it all together, literally gluing all the flavors and creating this satisfying bite. Whether you like your burger simple and thin or built high and thick, the Billy Goat Tavern has got it for you. Cheeseburgers for breakfast are not a normal thing, even for us. But if I'm gonna eat a cheeseburger for breakfast, this is it. The simple life never tasted so good. Now back to our shopping spree on the magnificent mile after a little cycling, try to earn these calories back. After we finished shopping, we were hungry again. So we stopped to eat at another iconic Chicago restaurant, Portillo's. You can find Portillo's throughout Chicago and maybe even in other states, but it's a small business with great food. The one downtown adds some feeling of old school, with antiques, old signs, and props throughout. They offer a lot of items, but don't get distracted or overwhelmed and order an Italian beef wet with sweet peppers and hot jaranara on the side. Also, don't forget to order a Chicago-style hot dog and a slice of chocolate cake. The assembly line is clean and the food is colorful. Chicago-style hot dogs have yellow mustard, green relish, diced white onions, sliced tomatoes, a pickle spear, sports peppers, a little celery salt, and wrap that baby up. A Chicago-style hot dog is a meal, 
like a salad to go. We're always on the move because we mean business. Don't forget the ketchup. Just kidding. Ketchup has no place on a hot dog and is a sure way to tell the tourists from the natives in this city. We easily found a place to sit and eat and drink a beer. Starting with the hot dog, I really think Portillo's does it best. You start with the steamed poppy seeded bun, which not only adds a subtle nutty flavor, but also a tiny bit of texture. When you get to the toppings of this big boy, you've got the classics. Pickle for its slightly acidic flavor and refreshing crisp bite. Sports peppers bring a spicy brine. The slightly sweet green relish balances with the slightly bitter white onions and the yellow mustard binds it all together. And remember, no ketchup on hot dogs. Like for real, no. The most important thing about the hot dogs is that they're Vienna Chicago style hot dogs created back in 1893. Of course, not the hot dog itself, but the recipe. This hot dog is all beef, boiled and has a nice snap when you bite into it. There is plenty of flavor and not your normal store-bought hot dog. All together, this is a balanced meal ready to go. Now, the Italian beef sandwich. This is one thing that I just can't get enough of. Double wrap to contain all its flavors. Although it looks simple, there are plenty of details behind the process. Firstly, this is thinly cut roast beef. In other words, it's a steak sandwich. If you ask for it with sweet peppers, it comes topped with a couple slices of green peppers. If you ask for hot peppers, you'll get a spicy jaranara, and we'll talk about what that is right now. If you don't believe it's beef, just look at how thinly sliced they've cut it. They are paper thin slices cut so thinly, they barely hold together. That makes this easy to eat. The jaranara is a small salad of carrots, cauliflower, peppers, and celery. Typically it's boiled with spices, water, and vinegar. To flavor the vegetables, once cooled, they preserve it in olive oil. Now what I'm about to do is mix hot and sweet, and that's not a normal thing to do, but this is not our first rodeo. This up close view lets you see all the flavor there is in every bite. We personally like our Italian beef a little wet, meaning they give you extra au jus or juice the beef is cooked in. The bread is special too because Toronto, a baking company also in Chicago, makes the best bread for this sandwich. The outside is tough enough to hold everything together under wet or dry conditions, while the inside becomes this doughy and chewy experience full of au jus. When you go for a bite, take two. You see what I mean? It drips, but holds together. If you like steak, you've got to try the sandwich. Also not very customary, but absolutely delicious, is dipping this sandwich in cheese sauce. I mean, cheese on everything makes everything better. Everyone knows that. And finally, if you still have room left over, we highly recommend a hidden gem from Portillo's that only the locals know about. Get a slice of their chocolate cake. We know it's good, but every time we have a slice, it blows our mind. Unbelievably soft, the right amount of sweet and chocolate flavors, and perfect for sharing or not sharing. It's not a dense cake. It's fluffy and literally bounces back after every touch. It's so fluffy and... Ugh. So if you're in Chicago or planning to visit, make sure this place goes on your list of places to eat. It's not fancy, but it is Chicago. And did I mention you're still downtown? And we're about to walk over to Millennium Park. And after a short nap in the park... <laughs> we're gonna go eat some pizza. And not just any pizza, but Chicago-style deep dish pizza from Giordano's. We recommend Giordano's because we've tried the other chains and it's just the one that we like the most. But beware, there are many locations. The one we specifically recommend is the one closest to Millennium Park on Michigan Avenue. Here you get a full show of a pizzeria, smiles across the board, and be in the heart of the city. 
Not to mention, the pizza is fantastic. Remember, this isn't a fine dining restaurant. It's more family oriented and for the tourists. When you go, don't stray far from the classic. And we don't typically order too much before the pizza because a salad is just enough to get the appetite going. When the pizza arrives, it's amazing. For us Chicagoans, it's normal. And for tourists, it's baffling. Whether this should be considered pizza or not is still up for debate and will never come to a conclusion. But whatever you call it, there is no denying this is a flavorful and satiating pizza. A tall, thick, flaky and golden crust holds together the cheese and a lot of cheese. Layered within, you can have whatever you'd like, but in our opinion, less is more. We ordered ours with pepperoni and cheese and sausage, but the Chicago classic of pepperoni, green peppers, onions and mushrooms is great too. This pizza isn't built traditionally but it all makes sense to have melted molten cheese covered by pepperoni and sausage and tomato sauce to have every bite rich and a little tangy but flavorful throughout with a crispy crunchy crust. When we visit Chicago we stop in for this nostalgic experience however since we live in Spain we've had to develop our own recipe so we can make this at home. Honestly it blows this out of the water. You can find our recipe in the description below or on our website. Traditionally, this is a knife and fork eaten pizza, but once you get about halfway through, you can use your hands too. One small deep dish pizza is enough for a small family of four or a hungry couple like ourselves. After a full day of eating, it's time for a nap. Just kidding. We don't recommend going to all of these places in a day, but rather spread them out over a few days and make sure to share. We're off sailing into the sunset. Thanks for watching, and as always, dream it, learn it, do it.